So I'm not here to tell you, don't do this, do that, don't do that, do this. I'm here to change the way you think. And if I can change the way you think, I can't help but change what you do, can I? Let me introduce you to the concept of success. Ben Franklin was a pretty smart guy, and I want to start with a quote by him. If you do tomorrow what you did today, you will get tomorrow what you got today. You want to know what that means? The average American makes between 3 and 5% more each year. That's the deal. And in today's economy, I'm not sure we're going to make the 3 to 4 to 5% next year as employees. So it takes you 20 years to double your income in America as an average person. That's the mediocrity that we're stuck in in life. And then you meet people who have the uncanny ability to double their income in a year, to get promoted five times in a year. The ones that beat the system, the ones that conquer it, You've all seen them, haven't you? The difference between them and the ones that don't do that is that they wake up in the morning and they think differently. They understand that if I do tomorrow what I did today, I'm going to get tomorrow what I got today. You want a bigger car? How about a nice house in Tahiti? Sure, would you love a nice house in the hills? We all want better things, don't we? We all want more friends, more stuff, more money, more security, more travel, more enjoyment. If you do the same thing tomorrow that you did today, you're stuck. Stuck. And it doesn't change. And it grows a little at a time. And you get a taste of success. But it's never fast enough. It never excites you. And when it does, it's a good month, or a good two months, or a good three months. But it doesn't provide a trajectory that creates success. So the first thing I want you to think about today is I want you to wake up tomorrow and do something different. And understand if you do the same damn thing, you're stuck. Just because you did it a certain way yesterday, there's no reason to do it that way today. I want it to hit hard. That's not what drives success, you do. There's no place for patience in business. You know, patience in life means things happen slower than they could. So if you're gonna be on this planet for 70 years and things happen slower than they should, at the end of 70 years, you're gonna have less, aren't you? Less experiences, less time, less money, less of everything. So let's all hurry up, man, and get more out of life. If you think your life is complete, then I suggest that you're an ass. Because tomorrow always has a great opportunity in it. Your life is not complete until you close your eyes. So when you say somebody who's in a job they hate would love to be able to do this, my comment is why the hell are you in a job you hate? Don't you have the courage to leave it? So you're in a job you hate, you're doing nothing to change it, but you'd like better. Sometimes you have to they, do but better. If they have mouths to feed. I, sometimes I get it. But what were the things about you? Listen, we'd have to go over those specific cases, I think, and really get into each person to break them. But what do you think that were the things about you? One of it is you always had your eyes open to tomorrow and new opportunities. What were some of the other things as part of your personality? For Because I've there aren't many people like you, but I've seen and I'm studying more and more people where amazing things are happening at 55 and 60 and putting them on life journeys that they never thought they were going to have. And I'm... And I'm seeing that you guys have a lot of the similar attributes, but what do you think? What was it about you, John? Courage. Courage. You know, the first time I went and shot a pilot for Bar Rescue was really hard. You think it's easy to scream at people on national television, to insult people on national television, to call you a jerk, challenge your marriage, challenge your, challenge your integrity, challenge your professionalism? That's hard. That's not who I am. I don't wake up and embarrass people in front of their friends, right. in front of their family. Bar rescue is the hardest work I have ever done. The courage that it takes for me to go out there and do these things. The only final advice I would give you is I've lived a very unconventional life. And it's because I live my dream every day. Dreams are inspiring. Work is not. Find a dream. Dreams make this world go on. It built our whole country. And when we get in a rut as human beings is when we lose touch with our dreams. We lose the ability to fight for those dreams. So don't be an employee of Google. Live your dreams at Google.
find a way to, to you know match your dreams with the goals of your company and your own work because there's nothing worse than when you see somebody who lost touch with their dreams you wake up in the morning you're failing so you blame the president you blame congress you blame greece blame the euro i mean you construction industry it's the mayor oh it's the, the and you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you're not failing because it's the other guy's fault or it's the economy's fault but if you looked in the mirror and said i'm failing because of me you wouldn't like it and you change that and i believe the common denominator of failure in any business is excuses as long as you wake up and blame poor sales on the economy or an environment then you have no motivation to make it better because it's not your fault but in the worst economic environment four or five years ago in this country that we've seen in our lifetimes there were people making a lot of money weren't there in the height of that recession there were people selling advertising people opening restaurants people building businesses somebody's making money so the excuse is bull it's bull so wake up in the morning and own your failure Look in the mirror and say, I'm failing because of me. And you won't like it. And then you'll change it. But as long as you don't put it on you, you have no motivation to change it. So in short, if you own your failure, you'll own your success. If you don't own your failure, you'll never dig out. And I find that in any business, always the common denominator of failure, personally, is excuses. You don't want to be a failure, do you? Not at all. You don't want to look in the mirror and, <laughs> and experience that. If you can't blame anybody but yourself, you're going to change. You're going to fight it out. That's the deal. I have a dear friend who's, who works for a large company and he wants to open a franchise of, buy a franchise of sandwich stores. So he meets with me and he says, John, I need some advice. Do I leave my long-standing job and benefits and do this? Or do I admit? So why can't you have your cake and eat it too? Right? Why can't you bring in a partner? Why can't you bring in somebody to do it? There's ways to get there. It doesn't have to be absolute. So if somebody wants to create a second career, create new opportunities in their life, figure out a way to do it without risking what you have. Right? And so if you want it enough, you'll figure it out. I BS'd my way into jobs that I didn't have the experience to do and pulled it off. But I had to believe in myself to BS my way into it. And I knew I could figure it out too. Right. And that gave me the confidence to show up at the interview and convince that guy to hire me. Because I was convinced myself that I could do it. And that comes across. You got to wake up in the morning and drive revenue. Which means you got to have the promotions, the ideas, the energy to elevate a business. You got to be a rainmaker in business or you're never going to get anyone wet. And when they don't get wet, they dry up and go away. And it's that wetness of a rainmaker that filters down and trickles to everybody's success. You have to drive the energy of revenue to be successful. And when you do, you'll have no expense problems. I drive quality as a leader. My systems maintain quality. Now, with regard to new projects, to me, every new project is a ball. And I have to move that ball every day. So I know, for example, that I have four balls on my desk. They might be five pads. Let's say five balls on my desk. They might be five different pads, five different books, five different projects. Every day, I'm going to move those five balls. That's the way I live my life. And I can't go to sleep at night if I don't move every one of those five balls every day. Sometimes I have three balls. Sometimes I have seven balls. But the amount of balls that I accept and put on my desk Every one of them is going to move forward every day, and I become relentless. So I've learned to live my life based upon the progress I make on a daily basis. And I believe that business is defined by what we do every day, every single day. And business is defined by the days that we have. So if you move those five balls every day, you can't help but be successful. You will achieve it, but you'll achieve it on a daily basis.